Hi, this is Craig Stocks here for Utah Desert Remote Observatories. You can find us online at utahdesertremote.com and we'd love to talk to you about hosting your telescope or hourly rental of our equipment. And today I want to talk about a technique I've been playing with to get what I think are some of the nicest stars I've ever been able to get out of an image. And we're going to use this image of the Cygnus wall and we're going to do it in PixInsight and Photoshop. So to start with, let's go into PixInsight. And I've already processed this image. That's why you can see the result here. And we're going to start just by focusing on the stars. And then we'll go into Photoshop and we'll add the new stars into the, the previously processed image of the Cygnus wall. I'm not going to spend a lot of time going over the, uh, the narrowband imaging and that basic processing. I've got other videos that cover that. I really want to just focus on doing the stars. So I've already run the data through uh, WBPP. There's about seven hours altogether of narrowband imaging, plus oh, maybe you know, three to six each at two minutes for the uh, stars. So that gave me my red, green, and blue for the stars. And let's start by opening that. And so I'm going to go to my, my swap files for the Cygnus wall, the master. Here's my red, green, and blue. And so we'll open those three files. And the first thing we need to do is just put them together into an RGB. So I'm going to use, I'll be using these uh, shortcuts or the uh, process icons that I have saved over on the right hand side. Uh, but you could also get to them just through the uh, process menu. Uh, channel combination, and we want to drop the red in the red channel, green in the green channel, blue in the blue channel and just do a quick check red green blue click the round circle to execute that I can close that process icon and we're done with these three and we'll just throw a quick sc screen stretch on it to see what we're working with and it will typically be an odd color this actually isn't too bad uh, first thing I I always do or almost always do with the color image is run uh, dynamic background extraction and again I've saved a process that has the uh, sample points scattered around the edges and because of the way the stacking didn't quite align some of these are gonna overlap that area so I'm just gonna quickly pull those in uh, sometimes this happens sometimes one falls on a bright star and you have to move it most of the time I can just run it as is uh, click the green check mark to execute that and that will neutralize the background and give me more or less correct colors to get even more correct colors I'm going to run the uh, uh, spectrophotometric color calibration and again I have the process icon saved with the uh, filters selected for my red green and blue astronomic filters uh, just drag that onto the image and that's going to run uh, the spectrophotometric color calibration. There is some setup to that. Um, it's not something, the process comes with PixInsight, but you have to do a little setup with the, uh, the star catalog to get everything to work. Uh, you should be able to find the instructions online for that. Uh, but that is just about done. That's finished. So now we have more or less accurate colors. So the next thing I will do typically is run Blur Exterminator and this is where I'm going to do something different. Uh, there's actually some options in Blur Exterminator and we're going to play with those options. Uh, and to do that first I'm going to make a duplicate copy of this. And I'm going to run Blur Exterminator on these two copies with two different settings. Uh, first I'm going to run with what I call my aggressive settings where I'm adjusting the star halos to minus 20 and sharpening stars up to uh, plus 0.32. And we'll run that on the copy that we made. It doesn't really matter if you run it on the copy or the original. But the point is I'm running it once with fairly aggressive settings uh, that's going to really reduce the stars and sharpen the stars and reduce the halos. 
uh, just overall give me nice, small, crisp stars. And that's part of the process. Uh, it's just about done running. It's at, uh, I'm running on two monitors, so here's the process monitor on the, uh, that's normally sitting on my other monitor. Uh, it's about done. Uh, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you can turn on the, that graphics processor for uh, these kinds of tasks, and it just makes a huge difference. Now we'll go to the original, and for this one, I want to do a different set of, of changes. Rather than the standard, this time I'm going to adjust the star halos up to plus 30, and we'll apply that. And it won't look a lot different at this point uh, because we still have some other basic processing to do. But it's building a foundation so that we'll have one image with nice, tight, sharp stars and another image with nice, broad, fluffy, uh, more colorful halos. And that's one of the main things that this process does for you is it, it kind of preserves the color in the halos better than a sharp star does. Uh, sharp stars can give you kind of a, a crisp clipped cutoff. Uh, this gives you uh, more color in the star. So that's finished now. So there's our, our fluffy stars. Here's our sharp stars. And we're done with this. Uh, next I will do a, I'll apply the screen stretch. And I almost always do some modification uh, using the sliders up here. In this case, you can see it's a pretty bright background. So we'll just darken the background down a little bit. Uh, may or may not adjust the stars, but I'm, this image is really just intended for stars. So use the triangle, drag it down to the histogram transformation. I can drag this over to apply that transformation to, to that copy. And then we'll also apply that same stretch to the fluffy stars. So now we have our two images and the last thing I will do is run noise exterminator and star exterminator. And again I here I have a process icon set up that runs both noise exterminator and star exterminator in sequence and saves the stars from from star exterminator. Uh, this process workflow is pretty heavy on uh, Russ Croman's plugins. Uh, I just can't say enough good things about uh, the three that I use, which is Blur Exterminator, uh, which is what we use to get both sharp and fluffy stars, and then Noise Exterminator, it just cleans up the image beautifully. And then lastly, Star Exterminator uh, pulls these stars out and puts them in their own file so that we have those to work with. Uh, there is unfortunately a, still a, a lingering bug in Star Exterminator since uh, when you first start PixInsight you do have to select the AI. It's, it, for the last couple months it hasn't been saving that from run to run. Uh, it's a little bit of a nuisance uh, and it just got me here since I had just started a fresh version of PixInsight. Uh, it didn't remember the uh, the AI version to run, so I had to, you know, go back and reselect that to get it to run. Uh, that's about the only complaint I have about uh, Star Exterminator, and I understand there's an even better version, uh, kind of waiting in the wings that uh, hopefully will be out in the next few weeks. Uh, looks like this is about done running. We're at 70% now. It normally takes about 30 seconds to run, so I'm just rambling on while it runs. And when it finishes, it will remove the stars from this image, and then it gives us a stars only version. Usually the last thing I do, since I'm gonna be adding this over top of a narrow band image, um, you tend to lose a lot of the star color when you lay it over a, a colored image. And the file's never gonna be more malleable than it is right now. So I will usually apply a uh, curves saturation boost and again I just have that saved as a process icon and that bumps up the saturation in the fluffy stars. The last thing I'll do then is save these and I've already done this and saved them so I won't do it again but then we can go to Photoshop 
and let's bring up Photoshop and the first thing I'll do is go to file scripts load files into stack and if you've watched any of my videos you've probably seen me do this many times click on browse and we'll just navigate to where we saved those two versions of the stars and I think I remember where I saved them they should be here they are sharp stars and fluffy stars so click OK and click OK again and that will load those two images as separate layers and that's that's you know what we want to work with because we're gonna play with how we blend those two together to create the the ideal stars so there they are loaded into layers you can see them in the layers palette on the right hand side and the first thing I'm going to do is just select both layers and tap control G to drop those into a group which I'll label stars and we can use the disclosure triangle here to open up that group to see what's inside and generally I, I want the fluffy stars to be above the sharp stars so I'll just drag it up so there's our fluffy stars and we'll zoom in a little bit if I turn that off there are the sharp stars there are the fluffy stars I'll put the fluffy stars in lighten blending mode so now it's just lightening what's below and then I can use the opacity of this layer to adjust how much fluffiness do I want. Do I want just a little bit of fluffiness? Do I want a lot of fluffiness or somewhere in between? And you'll f you can also add saturation again, uh, but we'll save that until we get it over top of the image. And I also know that I need to rotate this 180 degrees to match the image. So I'll just go to image, image rotation, 180 degrees and now the stars match the orientation of the nebula so let's go back and get the nebula and if you recall any of my processing I never flatten a file because I don't feel like I'm ever fully done with it so here's my image of the Cygnus wall as I left it a couple days ago and I just wasn't quite happy with these stars they're okay uh, I just don't love them so let's add the stars we just processed to this image that I processed a few days ago. So this is in Lightroom and to open it in Photoshop I can just do a control E that would be a command E on the Mac and it asks do I want to edit the original or do I want to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments and I almost always want to edit the original and this is saved as a .psb file which is Photoshop's large dark document format and I use that because these files do wind up fairly large uh, sometimes in the 10 to 20 um, gigabyte range so they are large but here's the file with all of its layers intact here at the top is my current stars layer and I can turn that on or off if I turn it off now I've got a starless layer or a starless image let's go back over to the one we just produced and we'll select this entire group and in fact let's rename it. We'll call this uh, stars fluffy so that we can keep it differentiated from the, the stars group that's already there. To copy this over I'll just select the move tool by tapping a V on the keyboard and then I'll just click somewhere in the image area click and drag up to the tab that has the other image drag down into the image area hold the shift key and then release the mouse and what that's doing is telling Photoshop that I want to copy it from the document it's in to this document and by holding the shift key that tells that I want it to place it exactly in place you know kind of in registration uh, with this image and by doing that because I've never cropped this image uh, the stars will all come out aligned uh, because it's dealing with a lot of data it may take a few seconds for it to finish pasting it in uh, but there it is so the last thing we need to do is just put this layer group into screen blending mode and there's our stars now there's a little bit of a artifact down here at the bottom and I if I turn this layer on and off we can see that 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 artifact at the bottom is from this stars layer so I'm just going to throw a quick layer mask on here with the uh, icon 
down here that looks like a front loading washer. Tap B for the brush tool and just paint a black stripe across the bottom to hide that. Now there's no stars there, but that, that got rid of that, uh, that artifact. And if we want to compare it, I can turn those off, turn the original stars on. So that's, that's what it looked like with the original stars. That's what it looks like now with these stars. And I would say it can probably use some more saturation. So we'll come down into this group We'll grab the uh, hue saturation adjustment layer and put a little more saturation, say, saturation in there. Sometimes when you do that, the small red stars get too red and they start looking like noise, but in this case, they look pretty good. And the last thing would be if we want to balance the fluffiness, uh, if we want more or less, uh, and this is just a matter of, of adjusting it to taste, uh, but somewhere I, right now I'm at about 88 percent and I think that looks pretty good and now I can just save this document and that will save everything in fact it'll save it with both sets of stars uh, and it will be saved so I can load it back into Lightroom uh, and in fact I've already done that with a copy I worked on earlier and then so this is the, the new version with the fluffy stars, that was the original, and it's that easy. Uh, if you want to duplicate the processing that you've already done in Lightroom, uh, you can select both of these and then use the uh, sync settings button here on the lower right to copy the Lightroom process settings from one that's already been processed to a new one. That's what I wanted to share, it's kind of a, uh, a fun, interesting way to play with star sizes. Uh, once you're in Photoshop, you've got a lot of control on how, how fluffy you want the stars. Do you want them real big, not so big, or somewhere in between? Uh, it's kind of a, kind of a neat technique. Uh, I'm probably going to start using this as a standard part of my process. So, hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. And as always, if you like this kind of content, be sure to uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel. And if you are interested in hosting or hourly rentals, check out our website at utahdesertremote.com. Thanks. I hope you have a great day today and an even better night tonight under a clear, dark sky.